From Close Encounters of the Third Kind to Western Postcards, Devil's Tower here has captured our imaginations. But what is the geologic history of this amazing and enigmatic feature? Let's find out together. I'm Luke, and this is Plymouthy. After leaving behind the exquisite badlands of South Dakota, I arrive in northeastern Wyoming to see this stark monument silhouetted against the golden sky. Devil's Tower, as famous as it is strange to behold. How can this place look so different from the equally spectacular badlands less than 200 kilometers away as the crow flies? Now, before I embarked on these questions of applied earth science as a geology student, I wish I had had at my disposal something like Brilliant, this video sponsor, since it could have greatly enriched my scientific understanding of the world, as well as filled in the gaps I had in algebra, geometry, and calculus. Geologists, engineers, even astronauts need to have a comprehension of math and science as broad as it is deep, and Brilliant's clever interface and entertaining gamification of lessons sets you up to go as far as you want to go and farther still. When I was a kid, I watched all the science shows, and as much as I gleaned from those countless hours of inspiring programming, they were always for a general TV audience. But with Brilliant, I feel the nostalgic fun of those shows, plus a much more profound synthesis of ideas, like I experienced as a university student. If you aspire to do more with science, math, and computer programming, Brilliant has every level of every course planned out for you. Or if you just enjoy STEM topics for what they reveal about the world around us, then these are the courses to invest in. Journey to the limits of your knowledge and beyond using the link brilliant.org slash polymathy for your 30-day free trial and the first 200 to sign up get 20% off a year subscription. Now, what is this made of? Now, if this looks familiar to you, it's because we've seen this before. This is the same type of rock that we saw at Ringing Rocks in Pennsylvania. It's phonolite or phonolite because like there, you could actually bang this and it would make a ringing sound. At least most phonolite is like that. And similarly, it's an igneous intrusion. Magma that cooled into this beautiful rock and in this fascinating shape, these hexagonal shapes, 120 degree angles for each one of them. Magma is the liquid or plastic fluid rock that's incredibly hot that can move beneath the surface of the earth, right? That's different from, say, lava, which is above the surface. That's the main definition. Now, there's a lot of differences between them, but the big thing about magma is it's not exposed to the elements and therefore has a long time to cool. And the absolutely beautiful forms we see here, these hexagonal columns, these are the longest and largest of this type in the world. These form because the magma of this igneous intrusion cooled slowly over time. So what's an igneous intrusion? Well, that's where these pools or rivers of underground liquid rock, this magma, they move into places and they can be vertically oriented. And when those are discovered, those are called dikes. When they're horizontally oriented, they're called sills. This was a specific kind of thing, essentially a magma chamber for an extinct volcano. So this was a lacolith. A lacolith is a kind of igneous intrusion where the magma rises to a certain level in sediments that are already there and rocks that are already in place. And then what it does is it kind of pulls on top of a more solid layer and pushes up layers that are a bit softer, a little bit more ductile, a bit more flexible. So it creates this magma chamber like igneous intrusion. And then out from that probably came some kind of volcano. This is not exactly the neck of a volcano. It could have been, but probably not exactly. It was probably yet below that. In fact, what we're looking at here, this enormous structure, this natural structure, which is one and a half times the height of the Washington Monument in Washington, D.C., over 380 meters tall. This was buried under a kilometer or more of rock, and plus the volcano on top of that, whatever form it may have taken. Maybe something similar to Mount St. Helens, just to give you an idea, or Mount Vesuvius. Those are different kinds of volcanoes, but something more like that than, say, Mount Etna or the volcanoes in Hawaii, just to give you a comparison. We'll talk more about that in the future. But this was underneath 
a huge amount of rock, so it had a long time to cool. And so where's the rest of it? What, where's the ground? What happened to it? And that's what's so amazing about geology is that we can see history literally unearthed before us. And then when we learn how to read the book, we can understand, wow, this amazing thing here, how this came to be. This was the base of a volcanic structure that would have just been an impressive, very impressive thing on the horizon. And that horizon, of course, that's long gone. So how does this expose? This is exposed because in this region of North America, there's been significant uplift, which leads to erosion. If we imagine a completely flat plain that goes off to, to sea level, yeah, it, it rains, but because there's not a lot of slope there, there's not gonna be a lot of erosion. But if you imagine lifting up this, the earth, and the, it keeps raining, and keep having rivers, those will be able to cut deeper because they'll be moving faster, those rivers and those streams of water, to get to sea level, or to some kind of baseline level. And as the land here has been lifted up, it has been more easily eroded. Now this igneous intrusion came as a part of the formation of the uplift of the Black Hills over in uh, western South Dakota, which we've seen earlier with the Badlands, and also the Rocky Mountains in general. The Laramide orogeny, which is what creates the Rocky Mountains, it has a lot of volcanism associated with it. Most of those volcanoes are extinct. There are still some that are active, like Yellowstone, which we might be seeing in the future. But this is uh, an amazing testament to essentially the same thing that was happening. This formation of the Rocky Mountains leads to volcanism, leads to igneous intrusions. This lacolith, which means a pond rock, this lacolith that got intruded underneath the ground and then led to some volcano that has since completely gone. And then the further uplift of the land led to further erosion and eventually the whole thing was exposed like this. What are all these pieces of rock then? Well, these are the broken parts of that tower, these columns, and it's called scree. So there are three interpretations for how Devil's Tower formed. This could be igneous stock. Stock is a generic term for an irregular intrusion of magma. It could have been a lacolith. That's from the Greek word lakos, which looks a lot like the Latin word lacus. In Greek, that word lakos means pond. And the third one that I like the most is that this is a volcanic plug, that this is part of the, an igneous intrusion, like a magma chamber, leading up towards the neck of the volcano, that part which eventually spews out the lava. Wow, this structure sure is a butte, isn't it? Well, literally it is a butte. Butte, spelled B-U-T-T-E, is a geological term taken from French, and it means this kind of thing. You're probably familiar with a term like a mesa. The difference between a mesa and a butte, for most definitions, is that a mesa is wider than it is tall, but a butte is taller than it is wide. So that's the, the usual type of definition. And there are several buttes like this across the North American West, just amazing structures. And not all of them are made of uh, you know, volcanic material. In fact, most of them are sedimentary. Now, the word butte in French, butte, that actually is the word for knob. So it makes sense, a kind of a knobbly structure, right? There are a few things that compare to the magnificence of Devil's Tower on the horizon. But the farther I travel, the more I'm convinced this land is trying to outdo the last geological feature. Can you guess where the next geology field trips will be? <laughs> you ain't seen nothing yet. What a beautiful landscape. I just adore Wyoming and all it has to offer in its natural beauty and wonder. Not least of which, this butte of a formation behind me. So remember to subscribe and hit that little bell icon. Thank you to each and every one of my Patreon supporters. And we'll catch you next time. What it? From clout, from close encounters of the third kind to Old West postcards. Devil's Tower here is one of the most amazing sights, and I'm just gonna.
Yeah, go, go here. Um, oh, hello. This is a flower. I thought it was a bee. It's not a bee. Mm. Ba -bam, ba -ba. Okay. Bia. Ba -ba. Ba -ba. Ba -ba. Ba -ba.